whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. One more time. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall, some translation says, save it. And thus is the reading of the word of the Lord. You may be seated in his presence. Bow your heads as we prepare to pray. Lord God, how we praise, honor, and adore you this Lord today for who you are in our lives. God, we bless your name today that we are able to be in the midst of your sanctuary, in the midst of so many testimonies, in the midst of so many who are in the valley and others who are on the mountaintop. We praise your name today, God, that you are in the midst with us that you're here, that you are sitting beside many of us in our pews, and that your word that is about to go forth, God, we praise your name, that it will bounce all over this church sanctuary, and that it might accomplish what you send it out to accomplish. God, we haven't yet praised, anticipating what you're going to do today. Now move me out of the way so that your word might go forth boldly and that God someone's life may be changed through your word today it's in Jesus name we praise you let every heart say amen, amen. amen. say amen one more time amen. all right all right y'all smile smile all right y'all gonna hear this until y'all start smiling Y'all going to keep hearing this. I look up and I'm like, Jesus Christ, help me somebody. So y'all smile. All right, you got something to write on or to write with? If you don't, grab something to write on to write with. Some of y'all that use social media, you can go ahead and tag today's teaching. Tag today's teaching. Y'all, I'm trying. I'm trying, y'all. Can y'all see me trying to read? Y'all know it's tough. It's dim up here. Y'all see me trying to read. I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying to use my Bible. I love my Bibles. I love them because they got all my little squiggly notes in them. Yeah. But I can't see them. Keep on trying. I'm going to keep trying. Deep Dave said, keep on trying. So I'm going to try. I'm going to try. All right. You got your Bibles. You got your pens. You got your note paper. Yeah. All right. Remember, we're coming out of Luke 17, verse 33. The Bible says, and, and we're going we're gonna to walk through uh, the scripture here, but this is our focus verse. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Somebody say lose it. Lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Somebody say preserve it. Preserve it. Amen. For uh, today's uh, teaching. We want to use this as a title for the teaching, which is a question. Are you trying to lose? Are you trying to lose? All right. Whoever, whosoever tries to keep their life will lose it. You try to save your life, you lose it. But if you lose your life, you'll preserve it. Y'all catching that? All right. Are you trying to lose? Now. This is a rough message because because the, 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 the theme God gave me the theme earlier this week. And then he confused me because he wouldn't give me an example of the theme. So he had me walk around for two days going, well, what am I supposed to do with that, Lord? And so much so that somebody said to me yesterday, Pastor, just don't worry about it. Just go ahead and do a refresher of something you've done before. And I said I was going to give her credit if I did that. But sometimes the Lord will drop something in your spirit and he won't let it go. 
And so he dropped this one in our spirit. All right. Are you trying to lose? And so it wasn't until yesterday. Are y'all ready? It wasn't until, y'all got to stay with this one. It wasn't until yesterday when I left uh, the salad spread. Y'all. I left the salad spread and I went home and I went home and I love going home because I can sit on my couch in my chair with my TV and I can sit there and I can watch and, you know, and I'm cool, right, when I get home. So when I get home, I do all that. I sit down, I take my remote, I turn the TV on, and some came on TV I don't never pay attention to. Horse racing. Oh, come on, y'all don't pay attention to it either. Except for y'all that's betting. I asked y'all the odds now, y'all can tell me. <laughs> So I sit and I turn on TV, and what pops up? The 144th Preakness Stakes. All right? 144th Preakness Stakes. All right? Now, if you don't know nothing about horse racing, then you, then if you don't know nothing, let me help y'all out. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? The Preakness Stakes is the second in a series of races that are called the Triple Crown. The first is called the Kentucky Derby. The Kentucky Derby was run on May the 2nd with quite a bit of controversy. The Preakness Stakes is the second of the three and the third is called the Belmont Stakes. And as of May the 4th, I believe it was, as of May the 4th, after the Kentucky Derby, there was a swirl of controversy immediately after the race. If you paid any attention to the news, you will know that the winner of the race was disqualified. Maximum security. So the second place finisher was then now chosen as the first place finisher of the Kentucky Derby. Later, it was then decided that they would sit out of the second race. Well, that's messed up because now no one can qualify to be crowned the triple crown winner, right? Because the winner of the first race is now not racing in the second race. Man, if that wasn't enough. Yesterday was highly anticipated, but it was also a contentious race. Why? Because the long shot by the name of War of Will erupted out of the gate and was trailing. But you got to understand, it was War of Will that came in eighth in the race in Kentucky because somebody violated their lane. I'm sorry to have to go here, but I just I'm just trying to set this thing up. I'm just trying to set this thing up. And so nobody expected somebody who came in eight to all of a sudden come in first. Come on now. But War of Will saw something that nobody else saw. War of Will saw a gap between the rail and the horse, which was a mistake by that lead horse, right? And so War of Will said, well, I'm going to exploit this gap. And so here the horse come racing up beside in this little bitty gap between the rail and the other horse. And all of a sudden, the horse that was supposed to be in the back, the horse that was in fourth place, all of a sudden not only takes the lead, but begins to increase their lead so much so that War of Will wins. The Preakness. Come on, the Preakness. Ain't that awesome? But that wasn't the news. That wasn't that wasn't what was that wasn't the news. That was news for about. Oh, I'm gonna give y'all thirty seconds. But that wasn't the big news. War of Will was, was the, went in the previous state for War of Will was a big deal, but it wasn't the main story. Here's why. Because in lane number nine, and I don't know about y'all, but I missed it. While I was watching the race, I didn't even see what was going on. But in lane, anybody see this? 
God, God gave me a message on Wednesday, but he waited until Sunday to show me something that I didn't see. I saw a war of will win, but in lane number nine, there was a horse by the name of Bold Express. And Bold Express was being ridden by a well-known, very experienced, very wise Hall of Famer jockey. All right. All right. But Bold Express had other ideas about the race than even the jockey. Y'all don't get what I'm saying. And so when the gun went off and the gate came up, what many of us missed was that Bold Express bucked, jumped out of the gate, kicked, and threw Jesus, I'm sorry, the jockey off. So the horse went one way. And the, y'all got to hear me. I'm not lying. The jockey went another way. Y'all, I'm not lying. I'm telling y'all the truth. And so Bold Express had pinned the jockey against the gate, threw the jockey off. The jockey went one way, landed on the track, and then all of a sudden you had a jockey less horse taking off down the field. Come on. Anybody ever seen this? You got horses running and this one over on the side running without, I mean, without the jockey. <laughs> Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know what to show. Y'all don't know what to show. Now, now you have a purposeless, out of control horse Running a race that he cannot win. In other words, he's trying to lose. No, I'm just, he has left his well trained, talented, skillful jockey behind, and now he's running uncontrollably down the track. And y'all, if those who saw it saw, the escorts came out. The escorts were trying to get the horse, but the horse, when the horse saw the escorts, you know, the other church members trying to come and help them out. (laughs) Boat Express sped up. Now, you know, Boat Express was out of control because even though Boat Express actually finished the race, Bold Express did not have enough sense to stop. Bold Express ran a whole nother lap. Y'all got it. I'm just trying to help y'all. And so, yes, Bold Express finished the race, but Bold Express, because the horse left Jesus, I mean the jockey, I'm sorry, left the jockey, Bold Express could not win the race. Now, let me stop here parenthetically to point out, now, I don't know how much, I don't know how much war of will got for winning the race. I don't know, because I don't understand all that. But I do know it had to be in the millions. Now, I don't know about you, but that's like a treasure. Okay? That's like a treasure, right? And so, I need y'all to understand, if we were going to relate what happened yesterday at the Preakness to us today, you gotta understand, you are not running a race for nothing. There's something at the end of your race. Are y'all catching what I'm saying? You, you, you're not in this for nothing. I know, I know. It might seem good to have a horse without a jockey, but let me help you. The jockey forfeited the treasure. Right? And God says, I've given all of y'all a treasure, but you can't access the treasure lest you win the race. Come on, God. Oh, see, y'all thinking you got to come in first. But I need y'all to know, there's a lot of people going to be running around the racetrack and they don't care if they come in second, third, fourth, fifth, because they know there's something in it for all of us. We just got to cross the finish line. Oh, come on, the race is not given to the swift nor to the small, but to those who do what? Endure to the what? Come on.
So yeah, there's value. Yeah, there's value there. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm asking y'all, are you trying to lose? And y'all are going nuts on me. Y'all going nuts on me because y'all like, Pastor G, that don't make no sense. Nobody in their right mind would enter into a race trying to lose except a horse. Why in the world would you try to lose? In a real sense, the way we see it, if you're not trying to win, you're trying to lose. And I had to go to a coach. I went to a coach. I went to Shane. I said, Shane, you got to explain this to me. Tell me of a time in a racetrack race where somebody went out on the field or went out on the track and their goal was to lose. Shane sat there and he sat there for a second and he says, Well, only if they're in their right mind. Oh, so what you're saying to me, Brother Shane, is is that in order to go out on the track with the intentions to lose, you got to be crazy. Are y'all hearing this? Because that's really where we are. In our minds, if you're not trying to win, you're trying to lose. And so if you look at the scripture today, come on, let's, let's stay in your Bible. If you're looking at the scriptures today, right? What we're seeing are the Pharisees. All right, let's slide up. Come on, because y'all, y'all think I'm playing with this stuff and I'm making this stuff up. Let's go on. Luke 17. I need you to slide up the verse about 20. Let me see. But yeah, verse 20. Y'all see it? Verse 20. Slide up verse 20. Slide up verse 20. Let me know when you got it. Yeah. Y'all see that? Yeah. I want y'all to see that. Here it is. The Bible says in verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees. And the next word is what? When. Say it out loud. When. when. All right, here's what's going on, y'all. Y'all got to get this. The Pharisees, who were lay scholars, are y'all hearing me? They were lay scholars. The way that they understood the situation that they were in was that the Jews were losing a battle for their own sovereignty at, by the overpowering Romans. And so the Pharisees are coming to Jesus and they're saying, Jesus, are you trying to lose? Are y'all catching this? They're saying, come on, Jesus. Uh, 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 we, we have not won no battle. They're saying, Jesus, when will this kingdom you talking about come? Because we don't see it. Are y'all catching it? They are losing and they're attempting to gain an understanding from Jesus by asking him, are you trying to lose? I don't know about you, Jesus, but when you came, you said you was going to bring a kingdom. Where is it? I don't see it. I see the Romans still repressing us. I see us still being depressed. Where is the kingdom, Jesus? Are y'all seeing this? I'm in the Bible. The Roman government had, 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 had not been overthrown. Israel was still being victimized. They had not been vindicated. They were not free. They were still under the control of the Roman government. They were still hopeless because someone else was in control. And so they said, Jesus wins. And I know, I know, they, I know they real people just like us because we do the same thing. Lord, win. You promised that you was going to do this. When are you going to make it happen? You said I was going to get that degree. It took, y'all know, it took me 20 some odd years. I was asking, Lord, when are you going to get to help me get this done? Lord, I need to stop doing this. When are we going to make this happen? Lord, I need to start that. When is this going to happen? Lord, you promised it. Where is it? Anybody ever been there? Yes. And so in other words, what we're saying to the Lord is, I'm here to win. Why are you trying to lose, Lord? <laughs> some of y'all, you asking that right now. And so what does Jesus do? Jesus says to the Pharisees exactly what he's saying to me and you today. Y'all see that? Some of y'all see it in red. He says he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. In other words, he's saying, you winning, you just can't see it. (laughs) What? Oh, that's what he said to us today. He's saying that, that if you got something in your life that's not happening the way you want it to happen, just because you don't see it don't mean it ain't there. Right. Uh-huh. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. Now, I, I, I wish I had something in my pocket, but let me just say it like this. There's some of y'all in your mind, you can't pay attention to me because you need $100. <laughs> right. 
Y'all hear what I'm saying? You need a hundred dollars. But here's the deal. The hundred dollars is in the house. You just don't see it. Y'all see how that works? Some of y'all, you, the reason why you're not healed is because you ain't acknowledging just because you don't see your healing don't mean your healing ain't here. God says you winning. You just can't see it. Your victory is not to be observed. And so Jesus goes on to say that the kingdom is here with you because you don't see it. I'm with you. You're catching this. That's what he, he says. He says, yeah, 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 yeah. You're looking for victory. But here's the real deal. When you see me, you see the victory. Are y'all getting that? He says, he says, you're looking for a win in Rome and the victory isn't in Rome. The victory is in me. And so when you see me, you see victory. That's why we should be grateful because no matter what things look like on the outside, so long as you can see Jesus in your situation, you should see victory. Do I have a witness? Okay, y'all not catching this. I got to stay with the Bible. Let me stay with the Bible. Anybody ever know a guy named Peter? See, there was a day when, 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 when Jesus came walking on the water. And when Jesus came walking on the water, he scared a whole bunch of folk called the disciples. Yeah. And so the disciples thought it was a goat. And so, and so uh, uh, he go, uh, Jesus goes up to the boat and, and Peter in the boat with all, all the, uh, all the uh, uh, you know, he, he's, he, he's the one that opens up and says something when ain't nobody else going to say nothing. Right. And so he opens his mouth and say, Jesus, if it's you, bid, bid me to come to you. Jesus said, well, come on. And y'all remember what it said. It said that when Peter steps out of the boat, He's looking at Jesus and literally begins to walk on what I'm just trying to help somebody understand what can happen when you keep your eyes on who Jesus. The Bible says that so long as he had his eye on Jesus, he could do something that nobody else could do. But as soon as he took his eyes off of who he began to do what? Yeah. When you stop looking at Jesus, you start looking at your situation. What happens? You start to sink. Ah. When you see Jesus, you see victory. When you see Jesus, you see victory. Somebody say, when I see Jesus, I see victory. Ah. But watch this. But watch this. Not only that. Jesus also says that not only is the kingdom you looking for in me, he also says, he turns to his disciples and he says, there's also a kingdom that is to come. Y'all catch that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in the Bible. I'm in the Bible. Uh, the next, next verse. The next verse. Next verse. Uh, verse 22. And he said to the disciples, y'all see that? That's what he says. He says, the time is coming. So we're not there yet. Y'all catching it? The time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of a son of man, but you will not see it. He talking about right now. Y'all going to be looking for Jesus and Jesus is going to be gone. Y'all do know that Jesus died and was crucified on the cross and he was there for in the tomb of all man's tomb for like three days. Y'all do know that, right? And then after the three days, the word of God says that his father raised him up out of this bald man's grave and they moved the stone away and Jesus resurrected like he said he would. Y'all know that, right? And then when he showed himself to the disciples and whatnot, he actually ascended into heaven and he said, what y'all worried about? He said, the way I'm going up, I'm going to prepare a place where I'm going. I'm going to make sure you get there too. Y'all know about that, right? And he says, but I am coming back again. So he says, guess what? That time is a coming. Somebody say that time is a coming. Now watch out, because he, he goes on verse 23, he says, well, people will, the people will tell you, they're going to say, there he is, or here he is. He said, don't go running after that. Mm-hmm. Right? right? Yeah, because can't nobody predict it. He said, it's going to come like lightning. Anybody, anybody in here, you got, you got, you done got lightning figured out? Yes. <laughs> anybody got lightning figured out? Right? Because if you got lightning figured out, come tell me. I want to invest in you. Yeah. All right? Ain't nobody got lightning figured out? You don't know when, you don't know where, and you don't know how lightning is going to strike. But what Jesus said is that me coming back is just like lightning. You don't know when it's going to flash. You don't know where it's going to flash. You don't know what it's going to hit. Do I have a witness? Am I by myself? 
That's what he says. He says, he says, he says, verse 24, the son of man in his day will be like the what? Lightning, which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. So Jesus says, instead of you looking for victory over the Roman control, you have to see that the battle the way I see the battle. He said, you have to understand the war, the heavenly war, the way I see the war. Are y'all catching this? Then the war, and I hope y'all getting this, the war is not, the battle is not about Rome. Are y'all hearing this? The Pharisees thinks, they think that it is about being free from control. They think it's about being free from the domination of a nation called the Romans. And Jesus is saying, y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. And guess what, y'all? We still missing it today. <laughs> y'all hear me? They, they, they're thinking that the fight is on a battlefield. They're thinking that it's on a horse. They're thinking that it comes with a sword. And he's saying, no, 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 no. You have to see beyond where you are. You got to see beyond what you see. You have to see beyond what you can understand. You got to see beyond what you can comprehend. What looks like losing to you is actually winning to me. Right. So how does he do it? So how do we how do we understand winning? Are y'all ready? ready? How do we understand winning? First thing, the first thing that we see in the Word of God is He says, "Watch my word." Y'all catching this? You write that down or be watchful. In other words, here's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, in order for us to win life's race, you know, the good fight. In order for us to win the good fight. You must understand through the word of God that there is actually a strategy. There are steps to winning this war. Are y'all catching that? And the reason why I know there are steps and stages, because in the Bible, here's what he says in verse 25. He says, but first, if that ain't the beginning of a strategy, I don't know what is. Y'all catching this? He says, so if you want to get in the winning circle, you have to accept the steps and the stages and the process. And that is found in God's word. And so what is God's word? Are y'all ready? God's word is direction. God's word is guidance. God's word is instruction. It's strength. It's correction. It's redirection. It's fulfillment. It's wisdom. It's comfort. It's leadership. All of that is found in God's word. And so what he said, you want to win, you want to win this battle, you better watch the word of God. Why? Because the word of God contains everything that you need to win every battle that you find yourself in. Yes, Are y'all catching that? There's a, yeah, that's a strategy. Yeah. 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 The world doesn't see it, but that's because the world is looking for freedom the world's way. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Y'all got to catch this. Y'all got to catch this. And so what happens first? passage here it is verse 25 he said but first here's what's got to happen he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation that's first all right y'all ready for number two i'm almost out y'all here see see, see what i'm saying except for Pat, uh, okay, deacon dave i'm sorry i keep saying that i, did, I gotta stop doing that and, and brother smith i'm sorry y'all number two y'all ready first thing you got to be watching the second thing, you got to be ready. Come on. <laughs> you got to be ready. Don't get used to your daily grind so much that you miss God. You better be ready. You better be ready. You, this is what he said. He said, first, pay attention to the word of God that tells you what's getting ready to happen. I'm about to be, I'm about to be crucified. I'm about to be rejected. The stone that the people rejected is about to become the cornerstone. Y'all better pay attention. And then after that happens, you got to understand that you got to get ready because something's getting ready to go down. Are y'all ready in here? Oh, y'all didn't act like y'all was ready. Y'all better get ready. And I'm going to tell y'all why in a minute why I got to get ready. But here's how he here's how he makes this thing plan. He says, I'm telling you to be ready because we've been here before. Yeah. Come on, Am I in the Bible? Yeah, yeah. He says, you remember Noah? Y'all remember Noah? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Noah was was to build an ark 
to save his family because of the wrath of God on the people. And the Bible says that the reason why you've got to get ready is because God is about to come down like lightning and to destroy some stuff. But if all you can do is be distracted by your daily grind, go about your business, do what you've been doing, talk how you've been talking, gossip how you've been gossiping. Doing the things that you do the way you want to do it, how you want to do it, where you want to do it, why you want to do it, watch out. Because that means that God is going to come back and you're going to miss it. Why? Because you ain't ready. You ain't ready. I know something about this, y'all. I tell you, I see people all the time. Y'all know, uh, at, uh, whatever companies I have, I always try to open up opportunities for interns. I always do. I always try to open up opportunities for interns in my companies. No matter where I've been, I've always tried to do that. And I tell y'all one thing I know after 30 years of business, some students ain't ready. They're not ready to graduate, and they sure not ready to take a job. All right? Y'all catching this? And here's my deal. It's sometimes it's not about the functions of the position. Sometimes it's just, you just got to know how to dress. Sometimes you just got to know how to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, and yes, sir, and no, sir. Yeah. Sometimes all you got to do is know how to put a capital at the front of the sentence, a period at the end of a sentence. Yeah. 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 Y'all catching this? Yeah. Some folk just aren't ready. Are y'all with me? Anybody ever been in a relationship with somebody that wasn't ready? Yes. <laughs> Are y'all with me here? All right, you, you go to the bank, you make an investment, you go to the bank and you take your money out before your money ready and see what they give you a penalty for early withdrawal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's some stuff that ain't ready. But what Jesus is saying in the scripture is, is that there's going to come a time where God's wrath is headed towards you. And he's saying, you better be what? Ready. You better be ready. So y'all remember verse 26 says, just as it was in the days of Noah, so also it will be in the days of the Son of Man. That's like right now, verse 27. People are eating, they're drinking, they're marrying, they're being given in marriage up to the day of Noah, entered the ark, and then the flood came and destroyed all of them. I'm trying to help y'all out. Don't get distracted. The world wants you to drink, eat, marry, and miss. What God is doing. I know I'm right about it. I saw it at the Preakness Stakes this weekend. The world wants to distract you from what God is up to. Are y'all catching this? Yeah. And so what's the grind? The grind is to be free. Right. The grind is I want to be free. I want to have free will. I want to do what I want. I don't want no distractions. But you got to understand that free will will distract and it will deceive you into thinking that all is well for your future. When in fact, all is not well. If you miss your future hope, you will miss your present responsibility to stay prayed up, to stay on your knees, to stay worshiped up, to stay thankful to God. And so you cannot be distracted. Because I want to be, I want to be free. Yeah. I want to be free. Oh yeah, you be free. You, you be free, why don't you? And God going to come back. All right, all right, all right. So let me leave y'all alone on that. Okay, so the first thing was be watchful. The second thing was be ready. The third thing is, write this down, Be willing. Be willing. Y'all like be willing to do be willing to do what, Pastor G? I hope y'all are catching this today. I hope y'all are getting this. Be willing. Y'all not want this. Be willing to lose everything. Oh, y'all done clocked out. All right. May the Lord walk between me and thee. While we ask one from another. Amen. Y'all ready to go? Like Pastor G, no, nah, we ain't doing that. I paid too much for this house, and the house ain't even yours. It belongs to the bank, Pastor G. <laughs> Pastor, no, man, I was in that chair too long for this hairdo. You mean to tell me I got to give up my hairdo? All this, oh, no, I paid for this hair. You don't feel what I'm saying? Pastor, I'm not giving out. You mean everything? I mean everything. No, Pastor, I'm with you. With, I was with you with everything you said, man. You, you, everything you said. You said be this, be that, be the other, be watchful, be pre- all prepared, be willing to lose everything. Oh, no, we ain't doing that. I worked too hard for that, Pastor G. No. He said be willing. To lose everything. Am I in the Bible? 
Am I about to look at verse 30? I'm just, I'm just trying to walk through the scriptures. He said, it will be just like the day of the Son of Man is revealed. Verse 31, on that day. What did he say? No one who is on the housetop with possessions inside should go down and get them. Yeah, you try it. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Do I need to say them last few uh, words? I guess I do because some folks don't know. Remember Lot's wife? Yeah. 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 Am I in the Bible with my Bible readers? Am I in the Bible? Yeah. Sister Malone, am I in the Bible? Yeah. Am I in the Bible? That's what it says. It says, remember who? Lot's wife. Y'all remember Lot's wife? Yes. Uh. No. Yeah, she's like, no. Yeah. Okay, here's the deal. Lot's wife, they were told when you leave the city, you got to leave everything behind. The word of God said, do not look back. Do not look back. Do not look back. And what did she do? She looked back. And when she did, she turned into a pillar of salt. God said, be willing. To lose everything. 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 Are you trying to lose? Y'all not catching this now. Are you trying to lose? Are you trying to lose? He said, you got to give up everything. And everything means everything. (laughs) I know this, this is a perspective shift. And so in other words, in other words, and I'm going to tie all this together. Hopefully some of y'all are already tied together, but somebody ain't tied together. I'm going to tie it all together. You can't want the freedom of the world or the freedom that the world offers and want everything life has to offer through Jesus Christ. You can't want both of them at the same time. Y'all hear this? You can't want the freedom of the world and life everlasting. You can't want both. Some, look, some decisions are what's called binary. It's either one or the other. There is no relativity gray area to this. You either want one or you want the other. You either have one or you have the other. The Bible, the Bible says it like this. God says, I would rather that you not be lukewarm. Either be hot or be cold. Don't be trying to straddle the fence. Either go this way or go that way. And when you get there, somebody say, stay there. Uh They don't make this stuff up. You can't have it both ways. You got to be willing to give up one to keep the other or give up the other to keep the one. Wanting what the world offers in, in quote unquote freedom is like that horse that came out that gate and threw that jockey off his back. He wanted to run free. Yes. He did not want anything on his back. Yeah. Are y'all catching this? Yeah. But watch this. You are disqualified from winning the treasure if you kick King Jesus off your back. Here's what I, I'm just telling y'all. Here's what I started to see in yesterday's race. On one hand, the conversation, it, like for 30 seconds, for 30 seconds, Brother Barry, for about 30 seconds, the conversation in the news was about uh, war, to, uh, war, of, uh, war of will. The conversation, about 30 seconds, it was about war of will. And then, before long, the conversation about the preakness changed. And I want y'all to understand what's really happening here because the conversation was changing to the way the world thinks. They began to distort the reality of what happened on the field. Y'all know that's what the enemy does. The enemy takes what's true and flips it around. Are y'all catching this? And so if you watch the race, 
On one hand, the conversation was about the redemption of war of will who came in eight, who was a long shot to win, who came from behind, who took the inside track, took the lead and then in- increased the lead and won. That was the story for 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Are y'all guessing this? But then I noticed slowly people began to process this anomaly that was happening over here on the left side. It was something that few had ever seen before. It was something that was obscure. It was something that was strange. And that was Bold Express who didn't even have a chance to win the game. Over time, the search engines on the internet began to return article after article after article about who people thought was the real hero in the race. The winner became less about the horse that was under control and became more about the horse who was out of control. Y'all seeing this? One article, literally, here was the title of one of the articles. I think it was in the New York Times or the New York Times or something like that. No, the Wall Street Journal, I believe. Here's the title of the article. Bold Express throws jockey steals the spotlight at Preakness Stakes. What? Boat Express who threw their jockey, who took themselves out of contention, who ran wildly around the field, who nobody, they couldn't stop him, who had no chance of winning, who was totally out of control, stole the spotlight from the horse who was under control, who took the inside lane, who took the lead, eventually won, came from behind, victory, you mean to tell me? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's important. Think about this, y'all. Yeah. The same freedom that the Jews wanted from Rome in Jesus' day is the same freedom many of us are striving for today. We don't want to be guided. We don't want anyone to tell us what to do. We don't want anybody on our back. We don't want to be under anybody's control. We don't even really want a savior. We don't want to be corrected. We don't be redirected. All we want is to be free to do what we want to do. We want freedom. So what do we do? We buck. And we throw Jesus off our back. And then we take off running. And then the word comes out. And it tries to get you under control. But then you run faster. So you can try to get away from the word. Come here, Jonah. You're trying to get away from the word of God. And it was so bad that he was so far out of control that they couldn't catch him. And that's what the world wants. We want to be so free. But we don't realize that you just disqualified yourself from winning. As soon as you kick Jesus out of your picture, as soon as you kick the guy, as soon as you kick the control, as soon as you have kicked the word out of your life and out of your situation, you cannot win. And somebody say, what is that called? Ask me, what is that called? called? I didn't want to answer unless y'all ask. Y'all ask me, what is that called? Wickedness. Why is it called wickedness? Because in the story of Noah, in the story of Lot, Jesus, let me see if I can. Jesus, I can't. I don't want to really deal with this, but I got to say this. In the story of Noah, And in the story of Lot, I can't even find it, but I'm just going to tell y'all what it says. In both of them, in both of those stories, the Bible says that in those days of wickedness. And so what I'm trying to help us to understand is that we are in the days of wickedness right now. And here's why I know. Because right 
is now wrong yeah. and wrong is now right. Yeah. Are y'all catching this? Yeah. In the days of wickedness. Now, this Bible is telling me that if we don't get together, if you don't get this thing figured out, if you don't know how to keep Jesus on your back, if you don't know how to stay under control, the day of that lightning striking is coming and you could be working next to somebody and if you ain't got yourself together, they could be gone and you could be sitting there like, what just happened? Jesus just came back. Was you ready? Or did you miss it? In the days of wickedness. We are in those days. Right now. Are y'all catching this? And so. I'm just going to leave this alone. I got to leave this alone. You can't tell me you want to lose. You you can't tell me that you want to lose. And then you're going to try to keep what God is telling you to let go of at the same time. I'm going to say that one more time because I said it wrong. You can't tell me you want to win but not be willing to lose what God says lose at the same time. Oh, that's where we are. That's where we are, y'all. That's where we are. You can't tell me. You can't tell me you want to lose weight but you don't want to exercise. You can't tell me you want to know God but you don't want to read your Bible. You can't say to me you want more, you want to be more like Christ but you don't want to love people who hate you. You can't say you want to be uh, wealthy, but you don't want to say or you don't want to invest. That don't make sense. You can't tell me you want to grow when you don't want to learn. You can't tell me that you want to be relevant, but you don't want to change. Those things don't go together. I know I'm right about it. That's where the world is, y'all. Okay, let me, uh, y'all want me to get out your way and I want to get out your way too, but I got to say this. I got to say this. I am an advocate of leadership. I I had somebody in our studio last a couple weeks ago and she said she didn't believe everybody uh, uh, is born to be a leader. And and I didn't say nothing about I vehemently disagree from this perspective. Everybody must be a leader of one. Everyone must be able to lead themselves. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And sometimes leading yourself doesn't mean that you know what to do, but it means that you know how to say you don't know what to do when you don't know what to do. So that somebody who knows can come in and say, let me help you right through here. You're not being a leader when you don't know what to do and you're so prideful that you ain't willing to open up your mouth and say, I don't know which way to turn. I don't know what to do. Sometimes being a leader is opening up your mouth and saying, help! Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Everybody must at least be a leader of one. And if you can at least be a leader of one, what that means is, is that you're willing to do and to make decisions that operate in your best interest. That's the difference. Because you can't tell me that you want to be healthy and you keep doing things that make you unhealthy. Those don't go together. Are y'all catching this? That's that ain't nothing but bold express saying I want to win, but I don't want nobody on my back. That don't go together. You can't tell me that you want a promotion, but you don't want to honor the position you in right now. That does not go together. You can't tell me that you want your city and your state and your country to be better, but you don't vote. That does not go together. You can't tell me that you want to make more money in your career, but you're not willing to go back to school. Those do not match. If you want to win, you got to do what makes sense in your best interest. And that means you can't say one thing, turn around and do something else, and then pray that God join you doing something else. God says, no, I don't operate like that. That's not how we win. We win when you keep Jesus in control. When you buck him off your back, not only are you out of control, but you just forfeited the race. And I don't know about you. Yeah. But I 
and trying to lose. Yeah. Y'all like, what, yeah. Pastor G? Yeah. Huh? Uh-huh. It says, whoever tries to keep their life, in other words, try to keep their freedom, uh-huh. you're going to lose it. Yeah. Y'all catching this? Yeah. But if you, if you lose your freedom, if you lose your life, yeah. you'll keep it. You'll preserve it. Y'all catching that? So what am I trying to do? Yeah, I'm trying to lose my life. I'm trying to lose my control. I'm trying to lose my freedom. Y'all catching this? I'm trying to lose my pride. I'm trying to lose my idea of what I think and how I think things are supposed to go. I want to lose my own purpose, y'all. Y'all know I tell y'all all the time. I'll be driving down the street and I want to lose direction. I want God to tell me which way to turn. I want to lose it all. Are y'all feeling me? And here's why. Because there's somebody that benefits when you lose. And this is the whole difference. The whole difference is, the whole difference is, is that when you lose, you don't benefit. But when you lose, God benefits. Uh, When you lose that attitude, God benefits. When you lose pride, God benefits. When you lose ego, easing God out, God benefits. Are y'all catching this? When you lose self-righteous indignation, God benefits. When you lose your greediness, God benefits. When you lose self-righteousness, God benefits. Are y'all catching what I'm saying? So I'm going to ask the question again. Are you really trying to lose? Are you trying to lose? Because if you're trying to lose, that is when you win. Yeah. Are y'all catching it? Right. Put your hands together for God. Yeah. Y'all don't know how to, y'all don't know what to do. Y'all like, okay, he talking about horse racing. <laughs> My pastor, I don't know what, I don't know where he got that from. Pastor talking about horse racing. We at church. Is he talking about betting? I don't know. No, because I don't understand none of that. So don't even go there. Y'all know too much about me to doubt me. I don't know nothing about that. But I do know that if you're going to win in this life, yes. you better lose yes. all of this stuff yes. that you're trying to control. Is that making sense? Yes. 